This is Mitchell Zoller from Global Medical News Network. I'm at the scientific sessions of the American College of Cardiology in New Orleans, speaking to uh, Dr. William O'Neill from the University of Miami, who just made a presentation on the Impella device, uh, comparing it with intraaortic balloon pump in uh, patients undergoing PCI, uh, unstable patients, um, high-risk patients. Uh, Dr. O'Neill, what uh, would you say was the main message from the findings that you had? Uh, that the uh, Impella provides very good hemodynamic support in the cath lab for people that have high-risk procedures that need to be performed. The hemodynamic support allows operators to do a more thorough intervention, which then translates into better outcomes at 90 days for 90% uh, of the patients that are in the trial. So how do you see this device being used now going forward from these results? Uh I think there'll be more people that'll be interested in using it uh, for hemodynamic support for elective high-risk patients. Uh, there are other indications for the use in shock and acute MI and for the use uh, in congestive heart failure that will also be very important to explore in the future, but at least in terms of this particular population of patients, I think uh, clinicians will, will see that it does really provide a lot of safety in these high-risk cases. And there was a fair amount of controversy uh, following your talk in the discussion because your primary endpoint did not show a statistical significance in the comparison to the intraaortic balloon pump. Right. And so, uh, particularly in light of that finding, well, maybe I should say, how do you interpret that finding and then how do you see that impacting the implications of what you found? Well, the, uh, the problem with the study is that it's the first that's actually been scientifically conducted uh, prospectively, and, and a lot of the uh, events that we estimated at the start, uh, we didn't really know what the event rates were going to be. Actually, the event rates were quite a bit higher, so we would have achieved statistical significance with a lower number of patients. Uh, we, for instance, projected that event rates in the balloon pump group were going to be about 30 percent. In fact, they were 50 percent, so we were able to show a difference in, in spite of uh, having the study stopped uh, early. Uh, in the pre-specified, if you take the most conservative analysis, the pre-specified group of patients that weren't treated with that thorectomy had a statistically significant uh, lower event rate at 90 days. And I think that's pretty scientifically sound. There are many other studies that have been done where the overall population is neutral, but pre-specified subgroups have a benefit. And we think that this is the same thing as the Barry trial. Um, so there is still a clinically important message despite the lack of having a significant result for the primary endpoint. Yes, and, and the, the primary endpoint was at 30 days. Uh, again, there are other studies that have done shown exactly the same thing. The 30-day endpoint for the shock trial was the same. At six months and a year, the, 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 the patients treated with hemodynamic support had a superior benefit. Uh, the similarly, in Europe, uh, the BISA study, no difference at 30 days, and now it's six months and a year. And I think the real message is that you have to follow these patients for a longer period of time to really know whether or not the initial benefit is going to be either sustained or improved. As we follow these patients longer, the benefit continues to improve. And so, you know, I think this is just the, the, the initial version of the story. Uh, there will be a lot more that will follow. Thank you, Dr. O'Neill. For Global Medical News Network, this is Mitchell Zoller.